I have heard one. I have heard people thought that everybody must have a Judas Iscariot. Who told you that? Read the scriptures very carefully. The spirit of Judas Iscariot is designed to kill you prematurely. The only reason why Jesus succeeded was because his assignment is designed for him to die. If he doesn't die, he will not fulfill and accomplish his assignment. You, your assignment. Death is it part of it. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Let's pray. I want to deal with, before we pray, I want to deal with the spirit of Judas. The spirit of Judas. I know that it is something that you have heard before, but you don't really know what the spirit of Judas is. You know, sometimes there are uh, jargons and terminologies uh, in the church and in the body of Christ that we often use, but we have no understanding of the terms we have no understanding of what we are even saying and one of them is the spirit of judas amen judas iscariot so i want to deal with judas iscariot tonight the spirit of judas iscariot hallelujah bow your head and let's pray heavenly father i pray in the name of jesus that you will speak to us expressly. Father, anoint my tongue with a cord of fire. Father, give me the unction and the anointing that make preaching and teaching easy. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that as your word goes forth, let it bless your people. Let it empower your people. Let it enlighten your people. Let it bring your people to a new place of understanding and revelation and insight as it relates to the spirit of Judas Iscariot. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody say the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Somebody say the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Now, I want you to understand that in every church, there is a Judas Iscariot spirit that reigns in every family there is a judas iscariot spirit that reigns in every organization institution in the corporate world the spirit of judas operates there in other words it doesn't matter where you find yourself the spirit of judas is there now you got to understand that the man Judas Iscariot is dead and gone, but his spirit lives on. I want to say that again. The man, the person, Judas Iscariot, is dead and gone, but his spirit lives on. In other words, his spirit is still alive. His spirit is functioning today. His spirit is still effective in the church, in our family, in our businesses, in our organizations, institutions. This spirit is alive and moving in different dimensions. And you know, the spirit of Judas Iscariot is a religious spirit. It's a religious spirit. What do I mean by it's a religious spirit? The spirit of Judas Iscariot doesn't speak wordly. The spirit of Judas Iscariot doesn't speak profanity. The spirit of Judas Iscariot doesn't speak curse words. The spirit of Judas Iscariot speaks scriptures. The spirit of Judas Iscariot quotes scriptures. The spirit of Judas Iscariot 
It's a church spirit. A church spirit. Religious spirit. And so, it is hard to detect the spirit of Judas Iscariot. It's very hard to detect it. For you to detect the spirit of Judas Iscariot, you must have strong discernment to detect it. Why? Because of the religiousness of the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Because it is the kind of spirit that speaks the same thing you speak. It is the kind of spirit that can flow with you in every direction. And so it is hard to detect it. The spirit of Judas Iscariot come to our prayer meetings. The spirit of Judas Iscariot come to in, in our intercessory meet, meetings. They are part of the praise and worship. They are part of leadership. In fact, oftentimes, the spirit of Judas Iscariot, it is the kind of spirit that operates in the inner circle. They don't operate outside the inner circle. You understand as I progress in my teaching. And so, the spirit of of Judas Iscariot, it is a very deadly, dangerous spirit that if you are not spiritually inclined and if your sensitivity is not strong and your antennas are not on, you will not be able to detect the spirit of Judas Iscariot. They will laugh with you. You will think they are friends. But they are not. The spirit of Judas is carried. It's a deadly spirit. Now you got to understand that Judas is carried. This spirit was prophesied long before even the person Judas is carried was born. David spoke of this spirit, expounded on the spirit of Judas Iscariot and how it functions and how it operates. I want you to turn your Bibles to Psalm 41. We will read from the verse number 5 through 9. Psalm 41, the verse number 5, reading, yes. Psalm 41, reading from the verse number 5 through 9. I will take my time to teach you and so I will be doing more of a teaching than preaching. I want you to grasp this. Because if you grasp this, it will deliver you from a lot of things. And a lot of things that is holding you hostage will be broken. So watch this. My enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? I will repeat that again. Take note. This is the prophecy concerning Judas Iscariot. We call it the Messianic prophecy. My enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name be perished? Now look at me before we move to the next, next verse. The spirit of Judas Iscariot is a spirit that kills you before your time. It's a spirit that purposes and determines that you will die prematurely and you will not accomplish your purpose. You will not accomplish your destiny and you will not finish your assignment. It is a killer spirit. It's a killer spirit. It's a killer spirit. They don't only want to kill you, but they want your name to perish. Which is very dangerous about the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Because you get to understand that you can die, but your name can live on. There are so many that we mention their name today, like Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Martin Luther King. They are all dead, but their name still lives on. Their name precedes them. But the spirit of Judas Iscariot, it is not just designed to kill you as a person, but to make your name perish. In other words, when you 
die as a person, your name dies with you. And so nobody remembers you and nobody remembers your name. The spirit of Judas is carried. My question tonight is this. Who is the Judas Iscariot in your life? Who wants you dead and also wants your name to perish? Because there may be one sitting close to you right now. There may be one that you have just eaten with right now. There may be one that you have just spoken to right now. There may be one that you have just prayed with right now. There may be one that you have exalted each other through the word right now. There may be one that you sleep on the same bed with right now. My question is this. Who is the Judas Iscariot that is in your life that has purpose and determined to kill you prematurely? The spirit of Judas Iscariot is designed to kill your ministry even before your ministry rises up. The spirit of Judas Iscariot is designed to make your business perish before your business is exposed. The spirit of Judas Iscariot is designed to kill your relationship even before you are married. My question is this. Who is the Judas Iscariot in your life that want to kill everything around you? Who is that Judas Iscariot? Who wants your name to perish? Before we proceed, let me lay certain foundations to you as to who Judas Iscariot is. Judas Iscariot wasn't an ordinary disciple. He wasn't an ordinary disciple like the rest of the eleven. Judas Iscariot was a very special disciple with privileges and was also very close to his master, the Messiah. Now, don't forget that Judas was the treasurer of Jesus' ministry. I have said this before. You don't make somebody to become uh, your treasurer. It for the church, for your organization, for your business, or your personal finances without first and foremost having a close relationship with that person, number one. Number two, without trusting the person. And so for Jesus to make Judas Iscariot his treasurer over his ministry finances, it means that Jesus trusted Judas Iscariot. It also means that Judas Iscariot was very close to Jesus. Not only that, when Jesus get up first thing in the morning, the first person he speaks to is Judas Iscariot. Before Jesus goes to bed, the last person he speaks to is Judas Iscariot. You will ask, how do you know? Jesus is the treasurer of the ministry. Before Jesus goes to bed, he sits down with him. How much came in? How much donation came in? How much money came into the ministry? And so Judas must tell Jesus and make an account and let Jesus know how much came into the ministry. When Jesus gets up in the morning, Jesus must sit down with Judas Iscariot as it relates to bills. Pay this bill, pay that bill, pay this bill. Because don't forget, it was Jesus that instructed and said, go pay tax. <laughs> go and pay tax. So Jesus was not just living on the earth without complying to the laws of the land. He was preaching the word. He was fulfilling his purpose. But he was also complying to the laws of the land. And so Judas speaks to Jesus first. Jesus speaks to G uh, Judas last before he goes to bed. 
That was how close they were. Jesus will not do anything with the ministry's money without talking to Judas. They were very close. Unlike the other disciples, they didn't even have those privileges. Beside John the Beloved, So Judas wasn't an ordinary disciple. He was close to the heart of Jesus. Listen. The spirit of Judas Iscariot is a spirit of betrayal. And the spirit of Judas Iscariot, it doesn't enter into enemies. It enters into people who are close to you. People who are close to you. The spirit of Judas is carrying. Your inner circle. Your best friends. Your colleagues. Your contemporaries. Your family members. People that you trust. Those are the people that the spirit of Judas enters into them. Because listen to me. An enemy that is far away cannot break your heart. It is the people that are close to the heart that can break the heart. If the person is not close to the heart, the person cannot break the heart. The person must be close to the heart to break the heart. And so oftentimes, the spirit of Judas is carried. The reason why they are able to break a heart, shred it into pieces because they are close to their hearts. If the person is not close to their heart and close to you, one, the person cannot betray you because what relationship do you have? The spirit of Judas is a spirit of betrayal. The spirit of Judas is a pretentious spirit. It's a hypocritical spirit. The spirit of Judas is a spirit of acting. It's a spirit that acts. And in this spirit that acts, it's a fake spirit. They are not real. It's fake. It is pretentious spirit. It is a hypocritical spirit. It is a disloyal spirit. Watch out for the spirit of Judas is carried. There are some of you under the sound of my voice. Some of the breakthrough and the miracles that you are believing for God for. You are trusting God for. Listen to me. It is not an enemy. It is not any witch or any wizard or warlock or psychic or cosmic powers. It is the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Who do you think you are talking to and you are telling the person everything about your life? Do you know who you are talking to? On, there are some of you. You have just opened the chapters and the pages of your life to the spirit of Judas Iscariot. That is why some of you critically examine yourself and look at the disappointment and the denials and the setback you have had in your life. It's as a result of you telling somebody about a breakthrough that you were about to experience and the breakthrough never happened. The promotion you are about to receive and you were so excited about that promotion and you were talking about it and you thought that you were speaking to a friend. But you didn't know you were speaking to the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot spirit is a spirit that is very envious. It's an envious spirit. He, he hates it when people celebrate you. Judas Iscariot spirit. He, the spirit hates it when people celebrate you. Do you remember when Mary Madeline broke the alabaster box and poured it on the feet of Jesus? Guess who protested? Judas Iscariot. 
They don't like it when you prosper. They don't like it when you are progressing. They don't like it when you are being celebrated. They don't like it when God is lifting you. They don't like it when you are advancing. They will protest against it. They will resist it. They will fight it. They will oppose it. But yet they are still with you. The spirit of Judas Iscariot is a diabolical spirit. It is a deadly spirit. It is a very your spirit. They will be with you and they will be laughing with you but they are backstabbers. Listen, the spirit of Judas Iscariot, they will kiss you in public but they will sell you in private. Judas sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver. And this was a guy Jesus himself called friend. Said, this is my friend. Do you remember when Jesus said, the person that will betray me among you, I will eat. I will eat with him from the same bowl. Now, if Judas eats with Jesus from the same bowl. Just imagine the closeness. Because I will not eat with somebody from the same bowl that I don't know. It's not possible. I don't know if you, if you like hygiene or not, then I'm eating with you. On the, it's not possible. I don't know what kind of spirit you are carrying. I mean, no, it's not possible. John 13, 26. Jesus answered, He it is. To whom I shall give a soup when I have dipped it. And, and when he had dipped the soup, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Sibon. They dip their bread in the same bowl. The spirit of Judas Iscariot is a spirit, is, is an entity, is a person that you eat from the same bowl with. The spirit of Judas Iscariot. It is an acting spirit. It is a pretentious spirit. Hypocritical psychophant. They will be laughing with you. But in their heart they are frowning at you. They will physically rejoice with you. In the presence of everybody. But in their hearts. They are not happy for you. The spirit of Judas. Organizations has come down because of the spirit of Judas. Institutions has crumbled because of the spirit of Judas. Families has fallen apart and divided and shredded because of the spirit of Judas. There are people today whose hearts have become so bitter because of the spirit of Judas. There are people today who are working with unforgiveness because of the spirit of Judas. Watch out for the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot is a deadly spirit. It is a dangerous spirit. Beloved, that is why your sensitivity must be sharp. You must be so sharp. You must have a laser discernment concerning the people that are around you, concerning the people you talk to, concerning the people you are praying with, concerning the people you share your private life with. You got to be very sensitive. Your antennas must be on. You cannot be sluggish. You cannot be slow. You must be active in the spirit because the spirit of Judas Iscariot is everywhere. Everywhere. Project the scripture for me. Psalm 41. And if he come to see me, watch this. And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. Now, you realize that it is not 
his facial appearance that gathereth iniquity. Because the facial appearance gathereth self-righteousness. Remember, when Mary Magdalene broke the alabaster box, Judas protested and Judas said, this thing is so expensive. How come that this is not given to the poor? <laughs> and Jesus responded, for the poor, you will have them always. But as for the son of man, not so. You know why he said that? Self-righteousness. Self-righteousness. So, when you look at their outward countenance and appearance and persona, they look so righteous. They look so pious. But it is sanctimonious. It is a sanctimonious piosity. The, they are iniquity and wickedness and evil. You don't see it outside. It's internal because they conceive it in their hearts. So the prophecy and what we read, is said, he gathered iniquity in the hearts. And you and I, how can we know the heart if God doesn't reveal to us? So you are dealing with, 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 with a spirit with, with an entity that everything facially says that this one loves God. This one is close to God. Friend to God. This one wants my well-being and my upliftment. But you have no idea that all the things that you are perceiving of that person physically it is actually opposite that is happening within him or her the spirit of Judas project the scripture for me and if he come to see me he speaketh vanity he gathereth iniquity to, to itself when he goeth abroad he telleth it Hey, listen to me carefully. He gathered iniquity to itself, which means that this thing that he has conceived, nobody knows except him and God. But when he leaves your presence and he is not in your presence and you are not with him, and he is outside with other people, he begins to tell the people what he has conceived in his heart towards you. I will show you shortly in the Bible concerning Judah's spirit. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it, what does he tell? The iniquity that he has conceived in his heart. The spirit of Judas is carried. The spirit of Judas is carried. You remember Sunday I told you, um, uh, I think it was during uh, Dominion Hour, I told you something. <laughs> what I told you, it wasn't just a daughter of mine story that I told you about. It was a relative of mine. A relative of mine. That I was talking about. A, real, a family relative of mine. She was having issue with the husband. Discrepancy and arguments with the husband. She told it to her best friend. Her best friend told her that your husband is that and that and that and that. You are better off leaving him than staying with him. She thought the best friend was giving her a counsel that will help her. This is how the spirit of Judas operates. And so she took the counsel. Separated herself from the husband. Living somewhere, the husband also was living somewhere. Apparently, 
the best friend was going out with the husband. And the plan was to push her away so that she can come and take over. And the husband of this woman in the middle of the night around 3 a.m. was sending a test message test message to the best friend of this daughter of mine. And when he sent the test message, the test message didn't go to her. It went to the best friend's husband because the best friend also was married. And the husband also is a very good friend to my daughter's husband. This is how the spirit of Judas operates. And when he got it, he forwarded it to my daughter and said, hey, look at what is happening. She thought a friend was giving her counsel to help her and to alleviate the pain and the anguish that she was going through. But she didn't know that she was the one behind the problem. This is how the spirit of Judas Iscariot operates. They come with you and they say they are standing with you. But they are actually not standing with you. They come and they say, I am fasting for you. But they are not fasting for you. They come and they say, thou sayest the Lord. But there is nothing like thou sayest the Lord. They are telling you what they desire and what they wish to come upon you. All is pretense, is acting. When you see somebody that acts, you got to know that that person is fake. Fake. Every actor is disloyal. Every actor is pretentious. That is why watch out for the people that don't clap for you when you win. Watch out for them. The people who don't clap for you when you win, watch out for them because that is the spirit of Judas Iscariot. The people that are not happy for your success, watch out for them. The people that are not happy about your testimony and they don't rejoice about your testimony, watch out for them. The people, listen, I forgot to say this because I need to say it. If the spirit of Judas Iscariot is a pretentious spirit, is a spirit of acting, and it is a disloyal spirit, then you got to understand that the spirit of Judas Iscariot is a spirit of professional gossipers. Professional gossip. The spirit of Judas Iscariot. It's an envious spirit. Envious spirit. They want to be the position where you are in. They want to have the same privileges that you have. They want to have the same blessing that you have. And so what you drive, they don't celebrate it. Where you are, they don't celebrate it. Your position at your work, they don't celebrate it. Your position at church, they don't celebrate it. Wow. There is so much Judas Iscariot spirit everywhere. You would think that the spirit of Judas Iscariot, after Judas Iscariot was dead, the spirit of Judas Iscariot also would be dead. But it is so alive even in the church. The spirit of Judas Iscariot. Wicked spirit, demonic, devilish spirit. You have no idea when you come to church, you, you have no idea who is looking at your shoe. You have no idea when you come to your church, the dress that you are wearing, who is looking at it. 
Believe you me, they know where you bought it from and they know the price. The spirit of Judas is carried. The spirit of Judas is carried. It is very rampant in the church and rampant in our family and at our workplaces. It's, it's everywhere. Everywhere. Project the scripture for me. There is a, a place I'm coming to. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me, do they devise my head? Now, this portion, 41 7, keep it. I'm going to connect it with a scripture shortly. Let's go to the next verse. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. That is what happened to Judas. But I will leave that one. Now, Watch this. Everybody look on the Monday test and watch this verse carefully. Carefully. Yea, my own familiar friend. You see, the spirit of Judas is not a strange spirit. It's a familiar spirit. In other words, it is a spirit that you know and it is a spirit that knows you. It is a spirit that knows all your itinerary. It is a spirit that knows your likes and dislikes. It is a spirit that knows your movement. It's not a strange spirit. It is not an isolated spirit. It is not a spirit that is far away. It's a familiar friend. Familiar friend. It also means it's synonymous to a bosom friend. An intimate friend. Intimate friend intimate friend. Listen, if you don't have a very strong discernment and you are not spiritually sharp, it will be very difficult for you if you are somebody that you are very careful and conscious about yourself. It will be very difficult for you to call somebody a friend. <laughs> it will be very, very difficult. Very difficult to call somebody that this is a friend. I remember a couple of years ago, the Holy Spirit warned me. Said you, you use friend casually. And most of us, we use friend casually. Oh, this is my friend. Do you know what it entails for somebody to be your friend? The fact that you work at the same place doesn't make you friends. <laughs> you don't understand. The fact that you come to the same church doesn't make you friends. The, the fact that you live in the same neighborhood doesn't make you friend and live in the same subdivision or community. It doesn't make you friend. Be careful who you call your friend. Project the scripture for me. Yeah, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted. Jesus trusted in Judas Iscariot. He called him friend. He trusted. And so the spirit of Judas Iscariot is a spirit that you put your trust in. Those who are hurting you, they are not people that you don't believe in. They are people you trust. Project it for. Yeah, my own familiar friend in whom I trust, which did eat of my bread. Did eat of my bread. Do you understand what that means? We eat together. I prepare the food. He comes and eats with me. I provide the food. I call him. Or he invites himself. And we eat it together. You are seeking for an enemy that is far away. You are praying all kinds of prayers, but your prayers is targeted and, and, and it towards a, an enemy that is far away. Because within yourself, you can't believe that there can be an enemy that close to you. That is one of the reasons why it's a book I'm writing right now. That is one of the reasons why when we pray, we don't get results. 
And we always say, but I have prayed, I have fasted, I have prayed for hours, I have done everything that I know to do, but no results, no answers, no manifestation, nothing is changing because you are praying amiss. You are looking for an enemy that is far away when the enemy is right there with you. Project that scripture again for me. Which did eat my bread? Which did eat of my bread? Of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. The spirit of Judas lifts up his heel against your destiny, against your life, against your progress, your ministry, your marriage against your business, your job, your position. I'm talking about the spirit of Judas Iscariot. The spirit of Judas Iscariot. The spirit of Judas Iscariot. Recently, I was talking to a son of mine. This son of mine is interested in a particular lady. Told it to a friend who is also a lady that I am interested in this person. And the friend that he told her how much he's so much in love with this other lady. He said, don't worry, I will work it out for you. Went and undermining and sabotaging and mining and sabotaging and breaking the guy's leg head, every part of his body until there is no bones left. Until the lady decided that, hey, this guy, I would not even cough at his direction or laugh or respond to anything that he says. I am talking to you about the spirit of Judas Iscariot. The spirit of Judas Iscariot. We have not got into the deadly part. We will we'll arrive there shortly. Look at somebody and say, the spirit of Judas is carrying. I want to show you a scripture. Turn your Bibles to John 15, the verse number 14 and 15. John 15, the verse number 14 and 15. I wanted us to, 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 to really pray. Um, look at what Jesus said to the disciples. He said, ye are my friends. Including Judas Iscariot. Jesus said, ye are my friends. Ye are my friends. You see, you are calling him a friend. Can I talk to you about the spirit of Judas Iscariot? Listen. The spirit of Judas Iscariot, you have a soft spot for him. But he has a wicked spot for you. You have a soft spot for the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Why? Because you see him, you see her as a friend. But he or she has a wicked, evil, diabolical, demonic spot for you. Won't you dare prematurely? Listen. I have heard of all kinds of messages concerning the spirit of Judas Iscariot. It's erroneous. It's, it's wrong teaching. I have heard one. I have heard people thought that everybody must have a Judas Iscariot. Who told you that? Read the scriptures very carefully. The spirit of Judas Iscariot is designed to kill you prematurely. 
The only reason why Jesus succeeded was because his assignment is designed for him to die. If he doesn't die, he will not fulfill and accomplish his assignment. You, your assignment. Death, is it part of it? Don't tell me that everybody should have spirit of... You know, we have all kinds of teachings in the church that people are so confused. So confused. And so they don't know how to deal with some of these things. In prayer. Oh, I, everybody must have Jesus are the Judas. Are you Jesus? Jesus' assignment, he is supposed to die for him to fulfill his assignment. You, your assignment, are you called to die prematurely? You have not even started. And you allow the spirit of Judas Iscariot to kill you before your time. And when you arrive, because absent in the flesh, present before the Lord, and God asks you, you, when I send you to the earth, what did you do? What are you going to say? You say, oh, the spirit of Judas. Thank God I'm not God. I would just subpoena the angel, carry this one and throw him to <laughs> hell. Project the scripture for me. You see, ah, my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you, I want you to watch something. Next verse. This is the most painful aspect. The most painful aspect. Look at what Jesus said. Henceforth, call, I call you not servant. You don't get it, the weight. Jesus, you see, they saw themselves as servant. They were dealing with Jesus as servant and master. Servant and boss. And Jesus said, no. You guys... You are not my servant. We are friends. From henceforth, don't see yourself as servant. Let's see ourselves as friends. And check through the scriptures. It is only few people that have the privilege of being a friend of God. The first one was Abraham. Who was a friend of God? God said, I want to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But how can I hear this from my friend, Abraham? The second person was Moses. He said to my prophet, I speak to them through dreams and visions. But to my servant Moses, my friend, I talk to him face to face. So in the whole of scripture, the third people that had the privilege of being a friend of God, because don't forget, Jesus was a friend. Jesus was God. He was fuel, fully human and fully God. Say, so you are my friend. You are not servant. So you see, whilst you see them as friend, they see you as an enemy. Whilst you treat them with kind-heartedness, they are looking for opportunity to nail you to your cross. The spirit of Judas Iscariot. He sold his friend for 30 pieces of silver. The spirit of Judas will betray you, will backstab you, will kill you prematurely for material gain. Material gain. Project the scripture for me. Henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. Aya. If this doesn't break your heart, I don't know what can break your heart. He said, if you call me your master and you see yourself as servant, then it means that you cannot know what I do because you are not my friend. 
And if I am your master and you are my servant, it means that I have to heed certain part of my life from you. But if you are my friend and I am your friend, then I don't need to heed anything from you. You must know everything about me and I must know everything about you because we are friends. Project the scripture. Henceforth I call you not servant for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father I have made it known unto you. I have made everything. He didn't say some of things, some of the things. He didn't say quarter of the things. He didn't say half of the things. Everything that my father has said to me in private, I have made you aware of it. There is no secret about myself. I am open to you like the opening chapters of a book or opening pages of a book. You see everything. You are not a servant. You are a friend. The spirit of Judas Iscariot is a spirit that stabs a friend at the back. The spirit of Judas is current. You are looking for your missing wallet. And their feet is on it. And they will be dragging it. And be looking with you where your missing wallet is. Meanwhile, it is under their feet. I'm talking about the spirit of Judas is current. The spirit of Judas is carried. Hey, there are spirits that if you don't deal with them, they will deal with you. I have taught the Ahitophel spirit. There is a spirit also we call the Absalom spirit. There is Ahab spirit. There is the Jezebelian spirit. There is also the spirit of Gehazi. And there is a Pharaoh spirit. And there is a herald spirit. As the person sitting beside you, which one are you? Turn your Bibles to Matthew 26, the verse number 47 through 50. I'm going to be concluding on this verse. I think I will continue next week Friday. I may not be able to finish it because I really want us to pray. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, who is speaking? Jesus, his friend speaking. I want you to watch something very carefully from this scripture. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve who Jesus called friends came and with him great multitude with swords and staffs. Lift up your head, look at me before I continue. Do you realize that it is not Judas who came with sword and staff? <laughs> Judas, this scripture Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane praying concerning his assignment and concerning his death. And the Bible says that Judas came into the garden but came with multitude who were holding sword and staff. 
he wasn't holding it. It's the people that he came with that were holding the sword and the staff. The spirit of Judas is carried. It's a spirit that will not come with sword and will not come with knife and machet to stab you. The spirit of Judas Iscariot hides behind the scene and hires people who will do the killing for him or do the killing for her. You will not find him or her holding sword or holding knife, holding machet, holding guns to shoot you. But he hires people that follows his or her lead to his target so that those people will do the killing for him. So Judas is leading them, but he is not holding sword, knife, machet, gun, or stone. It's the people that are following him that are holding it. Who have hired an assassin to kill you? Because the spirit of Judas doesn't operate alone. He operates with hired assassins. Not only hired assassins. Next week I will expand and expatiate on this particular Point. He doesn't only operate with hired assassins, but he also operates with people that hate you with passion. With passion. These people that were holding swords, guess who they were? They were the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes who hated Jesus. He is working with them. The spirit of Judas Iscariot works with your enemies. Your enemies get information from him. You know why? Because he is close. She is close. Knows everything. Knows where you are. What you are doing. Guess what? The multitude didn't know where Jesus was. It was him that was leading the multitude to where Jesus was. Watch out for the spirit of Judas Iscariot. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staffs from the chief priests, chief priests, and elders of the people. Watch this. Let's go. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign saying <clears throat> whosoever I shall kiss that same is he hold him fast. Please watch the monitors. Watch this. I will read it again. Whosoever I shall kiss, that same is he. In other words, the people even who are following him don't know Jesus. And so what he is telling them is this. The person that I kiss, know that that is the person you are looking for. And watch what he said. Hold him fast. He is telling them to hold Jesus, his master, his friend, his savior, his rabbi, He's telling the multitude, hold him fast. In other words, get hold of him, tie him, apprehend him. This is a friend, the treasurer. 
the treasurer. The person that Jesus eats with from the same bowl. The person that when Jesus get up first thing in the morning, he talked to. The person that Jesus talked to before he goes to bed was telling the people that the person that I kiss, that is the person hold him fast, apprehend him. Now let me talk to you about the keys. It is not every kiss that represents love. Be careful. It is not every kiss that represents love. Don't be deceived. Because the spirit of Judas Iscariot is a deceptive spirit. Deceptive. Deceptive. It's a lying spirit. It's a deceptive spirit. It is not every kiss that represents love. It is not every kiss that represents affection. The fact that the person is kissing your entire face doesn't mean that the person loves you. It doesn't mean that the person has affection for you. The kiss of Judas Iscariot is dangerous. The kiss of Judas Iscariot is a killer. The kiss of Judas Iscariot is a deception. The kiss of Judas Iscariot will take you to an early grave. The kiss of Judas Iscariot is disloyalty. The kiss of Judas Iscariot is betrayal. Watch out for people who kiss you and they say they love you. Re-examine that love. Project the scripture for me. And for with, he came to Jesus and said, Hail master. Hey, this is the most painful aspect. I've shared painful aspects for you. But this verse is the most dangerous, deadliest aspect. Because in this verse, Judas Iscariot revealed his real identity. In this verse. You will see it shortly. And forthwith, he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Judas has never called Jesus Master, but for the first time, he called him Master. He had never called Jesus Master. Because don't forget, the scripture that we just read, Jesus told them, you are my friends. Don't see yourself as servant. And so there is nothing like master and servant. There is nothing like boss and subordinate. We are friends. But for the very first time, Judas called Jesus master. You know what that means. What it means is this. Judas was telling Jesus that you thought that I were a friend. But all this while, I am not your friend. I am not your friend. You saw me as a friend, but I didn't see you as a friend. I saw you as an enemy. I saw you as an enemy. Project the scripture for me. And Jesus said unto him, I, friend, look at what Jesus said. Judas called him master. Jesus, even with the kiss of betrayal, was still calling Judas friend. Because that is what he is to him. The spirit of Judas is carried. Judas is carried. Will be looking at you and smiling with you. But you have no idea. He have dug a pit for you. He have laid a net in your path for you to become a victim. The spirit of Judas will be standing in front of you as a wife but sleeping with your husband. The spirit of Judas Iscariot will be standing in front of you as a, as a husband but sleeping with your wife. The spirit of Judas Iscariot. Project the, the, the verse for me, 50. And Jesus said unto him, friend, friend, friend. 
Wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Jesus asked him, my friend, what have you done? What have you done? What have you done? That is why you see so many people, they like keeping to themselves. It is not because they are, they are introverts, but sometimes experiences. For the fear of Judas Iscariot, they keep to themselves. The spirit of Judas Iscariot is everywhere. In your family, in that organization where you are working, the spirit of Judas is there. Here, in this church, the spirit of Judas is here. The spirit of Judas is everywhere. Watch out for the spirit of Judas. The spirit of Judas speaks against leadership. Speaks against leadership. The spirit of Judas. Hey, be careful. The people that come to you and they are bowing to you. Be careful. Be careful. The people that come to you and, and, and they hail you. And they give you accolades and appellations. Be careful. Don't let that deceive you. I learned that a long time ago. Me, those things doesn't deceive me. Doesn't deceive me. Oh, Papa! Those things doesn't deceive me. Believe me. Those things doesn't move me. I have come a long way. I have seen some stuff. The spirit of Judas is coming. Oh, Pastor Grant, we have not seen your kind before. <laughs> before you came to see me, you left somebody. You told him the same thing. But you left. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> you have to grow up. <laughs> you, you, you have to mature. You don't need to be a Methuselah to walk in wisdom. Every circumstance and situation I find myself in, I learn from it. Believe, hey, I learn from it and I adjust myself quickly. And I begin to walk in wisdom. And, I'm, and I purpose and determine that those things, it will never happen again. If it happens, I'm a fool. And I refuse for God to look at me and say, son, you are stupid. You didn't learn from this thing. Or anybody else calling me a fool. I won't give anybody that right to call me in that. Your eyes must open. You must be sensitive. <laughs> Don't repeat certain things that you have become victim of. Don't, don't repeat it. Learn it. Don't let the spirit of Judas Iscariot kill everything that is around you. Don't allow that. Walk in the wisdom of God and be discerning and let your antennas be on. Let it be sharp. Have a lesser discernment. The sweetest move of Judas Iscariot. Spot him. Shoot him arrows. Keep him or her at arm's length. Don't expose yourself. And the Bible says that the king of Egypt, called Shishem, came to visit Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the son of Solomon. Solomon was a wise man. His son was a personification of foolishness and stupidity. When the king of Egypt, Shisha, came to visit him, you know what he did? He took him because he saw him as a friend. 
and show them everything that is in the temple and everything that is in the palace, the gold, everything. Guess what happened? When Shishak left, he went and mobilized himself. They came back. They took all the gold in the temple, all the gold in the palace. Be careful who you open up yourself to. It will hurt you. The spirit of Judas is carried. Rise on your feet. I will continue this message next week because there are so many things that I have not touched on. This one is just an introduction that I just gave you. We will continue next week. Next week, Friday, and don't miss it for anything. I'm going to give you prayer point about how to deal with the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Do you remember that after the betrayal, Judas died? Do you remember that after the betrayal, he became restless? Do you remember that after he had collected the bribe, the 30 pieces of silver, do you remember he couldn't use it? He retained the money. And portion of the money that he used to buy the land, Akeldema, simply means a land of blood. He couldn't use the land. He hanged himself. And guess what? He didn't die like Jesus. <laughs> he hanged himself. All his intestines, bowels, came out. Matthew 27, 5. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Tonight, Judas Iscariot must hang himself. Amen. Listen, am I talking to the right congregation? I'm talking to you. I expect a response. Amen. Amen. You think that this spirit is a joke? Do you know what is dealing with you? There are so many things that are dealing with you. Don't only focus on witches and wizards. I'm talking to you about one of the spirits that is dealing with you that you have not been able to detect. Undercover spirits. So be serious. Don't, don't come. If you came to see Pastor Grant perform, I, listen, this is not Broadway. I don't perform. When I come here, my eyes are red. I'm serious. I am coming to battle. I am coming to war. I'm coming to war. You know, yesterday, the Lord showed me something. The Lord showed me a revelation. I saw myself. I was seriously in military uniform. So when I saw myself, I was wondering the revelation that... When did I become a military military man? You know? So I got up and I was wondering. I was just contemplating and meditating on the revelation. And the Lord spoke to me and the Lord told me that this is how you are always in the spirit. Amen. Ready for battle. Ready for war. Hey, you must be battle ready. Your ammunition must be intact. You must have easy access to your arsenals and to draw the weapons. Hey, if you don't deal with the spirit of Judas Iscariot, the spirit of Judas Iscariot will be messing you up. Because right now, as I'm speaking to you, the person that you are going to bed with, you have no idea who the person is. Because the spirit of Judas Iscariot, the Bible says that, and this spirit entered him. It entered him. It means that it can enter into your wife. It can enter into your husband. It can enter into your sister. It can enter into your brother. It can enter into anybody that is close to you. So you have no idea the people that are around you, if the spirit of Judas Iscariot have entered into them. That is why when I say pray, you pray because you have no idea. And it is some of this spirit that are causing delay. Like I've been saying, the year is coming to an end. Some things must happen for you before the year runs out. Some
some breakthroughs, some miracles, some open doors must be in view before the year runs out. And if that is going to happen, you must know this spirit and go after them, change them, pursue them, scatter them, destroy them, decapitate them, hurt them, neutralize their activities and their works. You must be aggressive. Hey. Some of the prophecies you have received from the beginning of this year, before 31st, it must happen. You shouldn't be having a dream. Oh, and I had a dream and my pro I saw my prophecy come to pass. Ah, are you going to eat the dream? Your prosperity in the dream, how are you going to enjoy it? Your riches in the dream, how are you going to enjoy it? Oh, I dreamt, I saw myself in a mansion. And you are living in an apartment. And you are happy and you are running around. You are moving it from the dream realm to the physical realm. Where you can take a key and open your mansion. Where you can get up and enjoy your prosperity. And enjoy your riches. And enjoy your wealth. That is what I'm talking about. Let me tell you. It is not too late for your prophecy to come to pass. It is not too late for your request and your petition to be granted. It is not too late for you to enter into that favor. To enter into that open door. To see that breakthrough. To experience that shift. It is not too late for it to happen. You must purpose and determine that by 30th of December, you have everything. Amen. Everything. When we gather 31st to cross over to the new year, when you are praying, you are praying about fresh topics of what you want God to do for you in 2018. Not you praying, God. You remember 2017, this didn't happen for me. But I beg you, I beg you. I beg you, I beg you. Show mercy. Oh, my sorrow. See my tears. Remember me. Let this 2018, let this happen. It's foolishness. It is not stupidity. You don't need to pray that prayer. When you understand the rules of engagement and you understand the scriptures and you know how to stand before God and challenge him by his word and deal with some of this spirit, you don't need to pray that prayer again, 31st. You don't need to pray that prayer. Why are you praying that prayer for? Why do you want to waste your time and your energy? No, you won't waste your time. By 30th, everything you have prayed for Everything you have asked God, every prophecy you have received, every dream you have had, by 30th of December, you must see every single thing come to pass. Every single one of them come to pass. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? This is what is going, the prayer, the first prayer. I'm not going to break it, so I'm just going to tell you the topic, and we are going marathon prayer. Somebody say marathon. True prayer is a time eater. True prayer is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Look at somebody and tell the person, true prayer is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Look at the other person and tell the person, true prayer is a time eater. I don't want you to be restricted. Get out from your chair. Look for a space. Look for a space. This whole front is a space for you. Look for a space. Because we are about to war. We are about to battle. Quarry says, don't worry. It's time for prayer. Singing time will come. This is how we are going to deal with the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Any Judas Iscariot in our lives... The spirit of Judas Iscariot that is functioning and operating in our life. Tonight, we kill that spirit. Amen. You didn't hear what I said. Yeah. We are killing that spirit. Yeah. Secondly, whatever the spirit of Judas Iscariot has taken advantage of us, we are commanding the spirit to return everything that he has taken advantage of. Everything that he has taken advantage of. Don't forget, Judas got the 30 pieces of silver because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he told the people, the people, the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the chief priests, 
the person you are looking for, I can deliver him. But if I deliver him, I need this money. And they wanted him. And so they gave him the money. <laughs> Next week, you will hear some things about the spirit of Judas Iscariot. When the spirit of Judas Iscariot is in your life and he's operating in your life, he takes advantage of your kindness. <laughs> so the prayer is this. Whatever they have taken, whatever they have denied, deprive you of, they are retaining it by fire. And the next prayer topic as we pray is this. If they don't retain it, let them die tonight. Amen. Let them hang themselves. And the Bible says that and Judas hanged himself. If they don't retain your joy, if they don't retain your goods, if they don't retain your glory, if they don't retain your marriage, if you don't retain your blessing and your breakthrough and your manifestation and your lifting and your promotion they will die tonight when they go to bed they will not wake up oh you didn't hear what I said because you are not entering into 2018 with any carryover everything God has said everything God has promised you everything you have prayed for it must come into your hands are you ready to pray? We are going. I want you to clap your hands, stamp your feet, and go after the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Mataka Bahaya. Rakapo Saka. Rekepetayaka Bahaya. Morosaka. Mataka Bahaya. Rakapantua Kabeha. Rekapo Saka. Malia Kabo Papa Kaye. Marakabi Taka Bahaya. Rakabulia Sakambatia. Rakabu Papa Takaya. Rakabulia kato kabe papaya. Rakabulia sakin mahanta. Lia kabu papanti akatea. Rakabulia kato kabaya. Rakabulia sakin mahanta. Lia kabu papanti akataya. Rakabulia kato kabeha. Rakamahanta yakabeha. Rakabu papaya. Every spirit of Judas is carried That is after our life. That is after our ministry. That is after our calling. That that is after our assignment. That is after our progress. That is after our advancement. That is after our money. That is after our lifting. That is after our promotion. We come up against it by the fire of the Holy Spirit. We come up against it by the sword of the Spirit. We decapitate them in the name of Jesus. Papaya, Reka Mahantu Akabeha, Raka Bulia Katu Kabaya, Raka Busa Kapaya, Raka Mahantaka, Liaka Bopa Panti Kibiria Kapea, Reka Bulia Kato Kapaya, Reka Baso Kepahaya, Raka Bota Kapaya, Reka Mahantu Akabeha, Reka Bulia Sakambatea, More Kibitae, Maraka Bantu Akabe Papaya, Raka Bidia Saka. Matuaka bok papaya, raka mahanti akabeha, raka buli akabeha. Every spirit of Judas is carried in your life. Let them be exposed by fire. Let them be restless. Let them not have their peace. Let their true identity come out in the name of Jesus. Let them not be able to fake it any longer. Let them not be able to act any longer. Let them not be able to pretend any longer. Let them be exposed by fire, by fire, by fire. Let their true identity come out. Let their true self come out in the name of Jesus. And anything they have taken, anything they have denied and deprived us of, Father, we command them to retain it. Retain it by fire. Retain it in the name of Jesus. Retain it in the blood of Jesus. Stillers of glory, Marua Kabe Papaya, Reka Mahantua Kabe, Roko Posa Kabaya, Reka Mahantua Kabe, Reka Bulia Kato, Reka Mahanta, Raka Bulia Kato Kabe, Reka Bahantua, Raka Bulia Sakaya, Matua Kabe Papaya, Raka Bilia Kato, Lia Kabo Papaya, Raka Manta Kapaya, Reka Bulia Sakaya, Matia. 
and the cover in our workplaces and the cover in our ministry and the cover in our homes father let them be exposed by fire let them not be able to function let them not be able to operate let them not be able to lift up their head in the name of jesus we neutralize their activity we circumvent their activity we superimpose the blood of jesus over their works and their activities we declare that they will not be able to function every arrow that they have shot at us everything that they have spoken against us let it return back into their own bosom let their desires and wishes and impressions against us let it come upon them in the name of jesus against us we overturn every table of evil every table of deception every table of disloyalty every table of betrayal every table of hypocrisy and pretense in the name of jesus we overturn we overturn we overturn we overturn we overturn we overturn maranka bantaya reka bushaka maranka buliasaka matuaka Reka mantua kabe baba, reka bulia kato kabe, reka bulia saka, matua kabo baba, reka bilia kate, reka mantua kabe, reka bulia saka, matua kabe baba, roko bulia kate kabe, reka buka ye, break in the name of Jesus, Maria kabo baba, roko buka 
the spirit of Judas Iscariot must die. We command you to 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 die. Maranka Banto, Rekabota Yekapa, Rekabota Paya, Maranka Buliakato, every spirit of Judas Iscariot that operates in this ministry, I arrest you. I command you to die in the name of Jesus. I smash you into pieces by the hammer of the word. I chop you into pieces by the sword of the spirit. I shred and scatter you by blood bombs and blood bullets in the name of Jesus. Maria Marua Sakambatia, Reka Pantua Cabe Babaya, Rocco Sakaya, Matua Cabe Babaya, Reka Buta Cabahaya, Maraca Bulia Catoa, Reka Banta Cabahaya, Malia Cabo Papaya, Reka Bita Cabahaya, Raka Bulia Sakima Hanta, Lia Cabo Babanta Cabahaya, Piria Cato Cabea, Reka Bantua Cabea, of Judas Iscariot that will not allow your people to break through and break out. We crush it in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of Judas Iscariot that have become a stumbling block, that have become a hindrance to our advancement, to our manifestation, to our prosperity, to our riches, to our happiness, to our joy, to our peace. Father, let them be crushed. Let them be affected. Let them be terminated. Let them be grounded. Let them be rendered non effect by the blood of Jesus. Father, rise up. Take hold of shield and butler and avenge us speedily and defend our cause speedily in the name of Jesus. Let your angels be dispatched against the spirit, the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Let them pursue it. Let them destroy it. Let them cut it off in the name of Jesus. Let them not be able to function. Let them not be able to pray, operate. We hurt their assignment. We crush their assignment by the blood of Jesus. Let fire consume them. Let your judgment consume them. Let your anger consume them. Let your wrath extinguish them in the name of Jesus. We declare that tonight our glory is revealed. Our glory, our blessing, our breakthrough, our manifestation, our breakthrough, elevation, favor, open doors, our business, marriage is peace, is released. We snatch it from the spirit of Judas Iscariot in the name of Jesus. We declare that this evil spirit shall not prevail. It will not prevail. It will not prevail among us. It will not prevail in this church. It will not prevail in the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Rekabulia Sakaya. Matua Kabe Papaya. Rekabulia Kateha. Rekabanta Yeha. Lia Kabo Papaya. Rekabanta Yakapaha. Rekabelia Katoha. Lia Kabo Papaha. 
reka mahanta lia kabo papa roko po saka malua kabe papa reka banka ya kapa reka buli ya kato reka bi papa reka po saka mati ya kapa papa roko poli ya kate reka buta ya reka mahanta raka poli ya kato raka be papa lia kabo papa before the end of this month before the end of this month let that which we have petitioned let that which we have requested let that which we have asked of you let it manifest let it become tangible let it come into our hands let the doors open let the favor come upon us let your glory overtake and overshadow us in the name of Jesus lift us up to where we belong let the prophecy come to pass in the name of Jesus Jesus. Give Jesus a clap offer. Oh, somebody give Jesus, give Jesus a clap offer. Thank you for watching this message. For more information about this message or the ministry, call us at 770 or visit us online at eagleschapel.com.